Now, your most accurate forecast from the First Coast News weather team, sponsored by AC Designs. Hey there, I'm meteorologist Michaela Lucero. We've been telling you about the North Fork of the Black Creek River near Middleburg. We've been telling you about it all night long. And what I want you to know is that they have uh, brought down that flooding uh, forecast a little bit. Earlier on, it was just below major flood state. Now it's around moderate, so it's being forecasted to rise to just over 18 feet. So a little bit of good news there that that number has been brought down at least a little bit. Current look at satellite and radar. There's the storm now just uh, far to the west of uh, Sarasota as well as Tampa approaching I-4. Let's get local here. Here's what we look like across the first coast. Uh, we've got uh, Flagler County here, Putnam County there. We're watching a few pockets of that rainfall uh, coming down at a pretty moderate rate. One or two areas with some heavier rainfall into St. John's County. Uh, widespread showers across the entire region. Duval County, one or two areas without rain, but a lot of us still under a pretty uh, good amount of wet weather. Into Nassau County, same story there. Far uh, western counties, just mostly cloudy. Haven't seen a whole lot of action for those areas. And same goes for uh, many spots across southeast Georgia. As far as those rainfall rates go, we are getting close to two inches. St. Augustine just over an inch and three quarters. Palatka getting close to an inch and one quarter. And AS Jackson about a half inch. Jacksonville over a quarter of an inch uh, there. Wind speeds and direction. Right now, sustained winds between about 20 to 40 miles an hour. Gusty is out near the coast. As far as wind gusts go, we're we're about 55 at Mayport St. Augustine at 43. It is gusty out there and those winds are only going to continue to increase with more details on that. Here's Chief Meteorologist Tim Deegan. Thank you, Michaela Lacerra. For those of you that don't remember Michaela, um, she was with us just, gosh, has it been nine months? Seems like it's been so much longer than that. She went up to uh, Washington, D.C., but she's down here to help us out, uh, but certainly knows the local area. Thank you, Michaela. Well, did you see the rainfall totals? Not too bad so far. There's a lot of rain to come, but it's one of the reasons why, although, yes, the wind gusts are there in St. Augustine. Jessica and Zach showed you the washover, but because that nearly two inches of rain has occurred over six hours, at least we're not seeing widespread street flooding yet. Our concern will be for the next two high tides that as the rains start to accumulate and the tides continue to flow in, then we expect more in the way of widespread street flooding. But I have to say I'm pleased to see at least it's not worse during this first round of critical time than what we expected. Okay, let's talk about this. So why are we under a hurricane watch when now the cone is offshore of us? Uh, again, this is the forecast for tomorrow. Hurricane Center just wants to be absolutely safe. Always concerned when the system gets back over the water if it's going to re-intensify. We actually have had further confidence building computer models that indicates it will stay offshore, that there's going to be too much drier to get into it for much in the way of intensification. So we're going to talk about that drier air. All right, let's do that. And uh, here we go, and here it comes, and these are the dew points. We call it the decider, and the lower the dew point, the drier the air. Look at that, in the upper 30s, that's all good news, folks. It at least supports the idea that this system will stay as a tropical system as it goes on by, but we're going to reflect, or we're going to respect that hurricane watch. And for now, though, we're looking at this high tide. We still think we have two more critical high tides to go again tomorrow afternoon and then on early Friday morning.